Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our Chefs for Chefs cook along. I am Sylvia Ng, the founder of Chefs for Chefs. And I'm also a registered dietitian nutritionist and soon to be certified culinary nutrition expert. And I just want to say thank you so much for joining us today. I know during the holidays, it's tough to get together and make time to, you know, do a cooking workshop like this. But, you know, it is the holiday season and I know it can be really hard to eat healthy with so many drinks and desserts flying around at every holiday party. So today I'm just making some healthy holiday treats and mocktails for boosting your immune system and your energy levels to make sure you stay healthy for the holidays. So feel free to introduce yourself in the chat, where you're cooking from and what you like to eat for the holidays. And you might not think of it, but food is such an important part of getting the energy you need to properly fuel your body, your mind and your soul. And chefs, which most of you already know, stands for Charities Helping Everyone for SEVA, which, um, which means we're basically cooking for a cause to support Slow Food this month, which is an international movement and network of awesome foodies like me and you. And if you're not familiar with Slow Food, just think about what's the opposite of fast food. In our society and culture, you know, food has become such a convenience where we're spending less and less time on growing, preparing, and even appreciating the foods that we're eating. So Slow Food really focuses on the importance and significance of celebrating the connection between people and the origins of food and their cultures. And their philosophy is based on three principles of good, clean, and fair food for all, where people can access and enjoy food that is good for them, good for those who grow it, and good for the planet. So I can actually put that link in the chat if you ever want to check it out. go and paste it. Here we go. So what is on the menu today? Well, what's a party without punch? So we are making a holiday hibiscus tea and we're also making an eggless eggnog, which is actually just my recipe for a turmeric golden milk. And for our sweets, we are making chocolate peppermint energy bites and cocoa coconut bites, which can be both a snack or a dessert really. So first, I'm gonna head over to the stove to make my holiday hibiscus tea punch because that needs time to steep. Here we go. Hopefully you can see this. Okay. So hibiscus is like this super beautiful flower and um, the hibiscus is actually parts of the flower. Sometimes they have the petals, sometimes they have the um, little bits in the middle and they kind of just dry it out. So I'm going to make my, my punch, if you will, my holiday punch using hibiscus. And so first I'm going to add, a, I'm going to make a smaller batch of this recipe, maybe about a quart of water. Bring that up to a boil. And then I have my ginger. So if you remember from last time, it's got this super like warming quality about it. That's great for your your heart, uh, it gets your blood flow going, and um, it's got all these antioxidants and healthy properties in them. You don't even have to remove the skin, I just slice it, kind of like when I made my ginger tea the last time. I'm gonna add that to the water. And then next I have a whole bunch of other warming spices typical for the holidays. So I've got my cinnamon stick here, throw that in. I've also got some, uh, cloves. You can also use star anise if you want. I actually thought I had it, but I didn't. So I'm replacing that with the cloves. And I've also got some allspice. If you've ever noticed, um, it's very spicy. <laughs> I'm going to throw that in there. And then I also just have a nutmeg. I have this piece of nutmeg that was lying around. So I'm just going to throw that in there too. And they're basically a lot of the same spices that you would use for like a spiced apple cider or one of those pumpkin chai lattes. Um, so I'm going to bring that up to a boil, let all of those spices really infuse the water, and um, yeah, that's about it for that. And then next, if you remember from last time, I had these orange peels that I saved, and they smell so good. They have all of these essential oils. Um, let's see. So all of these essential oils are found in the orange peel. Oh, we have a question. What is star anise? Never heard of it. Oh, it's like this, um, it looks like this eight pointed, is it eight pointed six, 
something like that. <laughs> Eight pointed star. It has a very like licorice flavor. Um, if you don't like licorice, leave it out. You don't have to add it into there. But um, it does add a nice uh, warming quality to it. So uh, yeah, Google it. <laughs> I hate that answer, but sorry. Um, it's super pretty though. It literally looks like a star. It's brown. It's got these little pods in it. And yeah, you can throw that in there too if you do like um, if you do like licorice. My hands smell good because it's got all these orange peels and zest. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> so these orange peels, I don't throw it in with the water because they can get a little bit bitter, um, especially if you have like the pith in there. But the essential oil, because of the essential oils, um, I don't want to ruin the, uh, the I don't want to make it bitter basically. So I'm just going to throw it in at the end. And what you do is simply just take an orange, you take a peeler, and then you just, and then you just peel it. That's it. That's all I did to the art to get the orange peels. And if you have a bunch of these left over, a bunch of orange peels left over, you can always just throw it into your refrigerator. It's got a little stinky smell to it, and it'll make your refrigerator smell like citrus fruits. So, all right. So then, while this is going, I'm actually going to toast my coconut for my dessert. So what I'm going to do is turn on this pan. Um, I just put about quarter to a half a cup of shredded coconut. It's unsweetened, by the way. And I'm going to put it on medium heat. And every now and again, I'm just going to give it a toss. So that way, until it gets that golden brown color, and it's going to it's going to smell up the place like delicious coconut. Okay. And then uh, next, I am going to. Well, this is already coming up to a boil. So I'm going to get my honey ready. And I don't want to add honey to boiling water because it sometimes uh, kills all the good properties about honey. You know, you hear that it's like an antibacterial and antifungal. Um, but, you know, what I want to do first is bring this up to a boil, turn it off, and then let it cool down a little bit before I add my honey, my orange peel, and my hibiscus. Great, so now that came up to a boil, I'm just gonna move it to the side. And what I could do actually to make this cool down faster is just pop a few ice cubes in there. That way it gets my punch going a little bit faster. Oh, all the ice cubes are stuck to the bowl. Oh, I'll just let that set it to the side and let that steep. Meanwhile, I'm going to make my eggless eggnog, known as my golden turmeric tea. So I'm going to take some almond milk, and you can use whatever non-dairy milk you have. You can use oat milk, you can use um, cashew milk, you can use coconut milk, whatever your favorite kind of non-dairy milk is. So I'm going to measure about a cup and a half of this, and I'm just going to use one of these mason jars because I'm going to drink out of it, really. So Less dishes, that's my, that's my secret to getting stuff done. These are my time-saving tips, really. I have about a cup and a half of my almond milk. This is also unsweetened. And then I'm gonna measure out a half cup of water. I'm just using the measurements on the side of the mason jar. It's good enough. And now I'm going to bring this up to kind of like a simmer. I don't want to really bring it up to a boil. I don't want to scorch it on the bottom. And while this is warming, I'm going to add in all of my spices for it. So I, what I'm going to do actually is make a larger batch of it. And then whenever I want to make this and drink it, I'm just going to take about a half teaspoon of the mix and throw it in there. So I'm gonna make um, a large batch of the spices. First, I'm gonna start with a teaspoon of turmeric. And turmeric, if you've heard from our previous episodes, is like this superfood. It's, it's super anti-inflammatory. Um, I know you can find it in like pill form. I added it to my butternut squash soup. It's just got these really amazing healthy 
properties to it. So why not add it into our drinks too, right? Uh, next, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of cinnamon. Ground cinnamon. Good. And then I'm gonna add a teaspoon of ginger, ground ginger. Then I'm gonna add a teaspoon of pumpkin spice. And I know during the holidays, everybody always has pumpkin spice lying around and they have no idea what to use it for. So I am gonna use it for this drink because it's actually got all of the same uh, spices that I put into the punch. It's got cloves, it's got allspice, it's got nutmeg, it's got cinnamon and ginger. So this is basically the powdered form of what I put into the punch. And then I'm also gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper to this. And I add pepper to it because if you haven't heard, um, when pepper is mixed with turmeric, it actually increases the anti-inflammatory properties of it. It also gives a little bit of a kick to our, to our drink. Now that I have all of these ground spices in this little jar, I'm just gonna close it and shake it up. So now whenever I wanna make this drink, I can just measure out about a half a teaspoon from here and add it to my almond milk. Well, don't forget to shake your coconut. Oh, it smells so good. If you see, it already has a little bit of that golden color to it. That was fast. I'm just gonna let it cool on the side. Oh, it smells so good too. And you can actually make an even larger batch of this and give it away as a gift. You know how people give away those hot cocoa mixes for winter. Um, you can give them this mix instead. It's like a, it's like a super warming spice mix. But there we go. Now I'm just gonna add about a half teaspoon to my almond milk. And then I'm going to whisk it while I'm heating it up. And again, you could add a little bit of honey to this. Um, you could add a little bit of coconut sugar to it. Um, but I'm going to add a little bit of honey to it because I have this really great local honey from a woman that's in our neighborhood. Actually, she's got a bunch of bees in the backyard. So <laughs> she makes her own honey and I got it as a gift. So how can I not use it, right? And it's got this really floral flavor to the honey. It's different than what you'd buy in the stores, you know, because, um, you know, the bees make the honey based on uh, whatever flowers and um, they find, whatever wherever they get their nectar from. So it's really interesting to find how different all of these local honeys taste from all around the world. Um, some of the best honey I've gotten was from like Turkey because it was made from like a local uh, beekeeper. And this one, it, it smells like more like flowers, you know, it's just, it's a lighter color, but um, anyway, save the bees and all because we need the bees. We need them to pollinate our flowers, our food, um, they're super important. So that's why I try to tell people not to spray stuff all over their lawns, just because, you know, some of that stuff can be toxic for the bees. And, you know, we definitely don't want to harm the bees. We want to save the bees, so great. So now, as I'm whisking, you can see, I'll bring it up to the camera. It's got, it's, it's steaming. And it's got this nice golden kind of color to it. So it is kind of like an eggnog in the sense that it looks like eggnog with all the spices and um, the golden color to it. But instead, this is my vegan version. And that's about it. And uh, the reason why I whisk it is because I wanted to get that little bit of a frothiness, but I also want, I don't want it to scald on the bottom. That's not fun to clean up. Great, and then now that that's done, I'm just gonna let that sit. And I'm gonna add a touch of honey to it. Maybe, you know, maybe a quarter teaspoon to it. 
You can always add more or less if you want. And this smells so good. <laughs> I love these spices. It's probably one of my favorite parts about fall. You have all of these really great spices. Even when you walk into the supermarket, you smell cinnamon, right? Supposedly it's to get, it's supposed to trigger something in your brain to go buy more. I don't know if that's true or not, but I think it's an interesting psychology experiment there. It smells nice anyway. Great. So I'm going to let that cool down. And in the meantime, I'm gonna check on my punch here. Oh, it smells really good. So I'm gonna add some honey to my punch, um, which isn't punch yet, it's literally just spiced water. <laughs> but I'm gonna add a little bit of honey to that as well as a sweetener. Again, you don't have to. Um, when I drink hibiscus tea, I actually don't add any honey to it, but um, if people are expecting this like fruity punch, they're gonna expect it to be a little bit sweet. Great, and then hopefully, yep, I'm gonna add a few more ice cubes to it just to cool it down. And I'm just gonna cool it down enough where I can pour it back into a glass bottle. Cause I wanna show you what it looks like when I add the hibiscus to it. It does this very cool kind of like slow-mo diffusion going on. <laughs> Great. So now I'm just gonna add in my orange peels to it. And that's probably about a half an orange worth. Mm. It smells great. Maybe one more ice cube. Okay. Oh, it smells good. I feel like I'm going to spill this all over the place if I do. <laughs> but I'm going to try to add Add this into my glass bottle. Yeah, it's not too hot. And if you don't, if you don't want the tea to be super strong, just steep it for less time. I like strong tea, so I'm gonna add everything in there with it. Okay. Perfect. Great, and throw in the pieces of ginger and the rest of the orange peels. Whoa, <laughs> filled it all the way to the top, which I think is a little bit too much, but just gonna I drink a little bit. <laughs> oh, that is so good. Oh, that is so that is so refreshing. Um, so you can drink this more and more hot, literally. But what I'm gonna do, um, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm gonna add in the hibiscus. And the hibiscus is actually great because it's got it's full of antioxidants and the polyphenols and vitamin C actually, which we know is great for your immune system. So I'm just gonna take this. You can slowly watch the hibiscus diffuse into the water. And then by the end of today's workshop, it'll be completely red or pink. And then that's it for your punch. It was that easy, right? You can serve it over ice. Um, you can serve it in a wine glass if you want to be fancy. And I say this is a really great replacement for sangria too. You know, if you want to throw in some fruits like 
um, apples or oranges or grapes or whatever you put into your sangria. This will be a great uh, mocktail version of that too. So we'll check back on our punch at the very end and it should be, you know, this beautiful pinkish red color. Oh, so pretty, right? <laughs> okay, here we go. Great, so next I'm actually gonna use this bowl or this pot, sorry, as my double boiler for one of my desserts. Because it's still a little bit too hot to drink, um, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna melt a little bit of cocoa butter and cocoa powder in here since the pot is already hot. Uh, but a double boiler is basically heating up something using the steam um, instead of direct heat from the pot. I'm gonna grab some of my cocoa butter here. I'm gonna use about three tablespoons or so of cocoa butter. And if you've never used cocoa butter before, or if you've seen it in your um, cosmetics, your lotions, it's basically, they come in these like blocks and they look like blocks of white chocolate, I would say. Um, you can buy them in like pellets and it's really great for your skin actually, which is why you see it in a lot of lotions and things like that. But it's one of the major parts of um, chocolate, even though it doesn't look like chocolate, it smells like chocolate. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> what I'm going to do is just melt it in this, in this bowl right here. Put about three tablespoons. I have about three tablespoons here. And then if you want to add co um, coconut oil to it, you can too, but I think I'm just going to go with the cocoa butter plus the cocoa powder first. Next, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of cocoa powder. And if you realize what chocolate is, it's basically cocoa powder plus cocoa butter put together. But um, you'll see what I mean. It'll look like liquid chocolate, basically. <laughs> and then I'm just going to add a little bit of a sweetener to it. You could add maple syrup to it if you want to make it a little sweet. Um, if you were to eat like 100% chocolate, that's basically what it would taste like, um, which is a little bit bitter for people. So I don't do that. Um, so my partner has been begging me to make chocolate using stevia because he cannot find chocolate without sugar in it. Um, we try to not eat as much sugar in our diet because it's actually very, it's highly inflammatory. You know, it can cause weight gain, um, it can lead to fatty liver disease. You know, people think of sugar, they automatically think diabetes, but you know, it has so many other, um, negative health effects. And yeah, I mean, sugar's found in everything these days. So you kind of just have to be careful and read the ingredients to make sure that what you're buying doesn't have all of these um, sugars in it. But you have to be careful too, because they'll try to hide it or name it as other things um, in your foods. So I am going to try making chocolate using stevia. And I don't like stevia because it has this like weird taste to it, in my opinion. But when I do add it to chocolate, it's almost like because the chocolate is so bitter, I don't notice the bitterness or the flavor of the stevia. So I'm actually going to make this for the first time using stevia. I have a little spatula here. And I'm going to add maybe like one little smidgen of it. It's very strong. So you don't need a lot to get things sweet. And if you see how small this little scoop is, it's like a little smidgen. <laughs> I'm gonna try that and I'm just gonna mix this up. I'm gonna let the heat, like I said, I'm gonna let the heat from my golden milk underneath melt the cocoa butter. And you can already see, I'll bring it up to the camera. You can already see that it's starting to look like chocolate. I'm gonna let that sit there and finish melting. And that's how you make chocolate, people. That's, that's pretty easy, right? <laughs> there we go. 
Great. So moving on to our chocolate peppermint energy bites. Um, you might have seen these around in the stores. They're called like energy balls or energy bites, and they're always made with like dates as the base of it. So here I have some, some dates uh, that I had soaked in a little bit of water. So if you can see that, they've actually gotten really soft, and that's great. But most of the time, when I when you buy dates, it comes like in these like really hard like dried up, <laughs> dried up bits. So what I'm going to do is actually just soak the rest of these dates in water. I have about a total of about 12 dates. So I'm going to put these in my food processor here. And if you'll notice the dates that I had already soaked, they made this kind of a liquidy date syrup. So if you also, you can also use that as a sweetener. So if you want to make everything totally vegan and not use honey, you can actually just soak some dates in water and you end up with like this date syrup instead and use that as a natural sweetener. So just going to add these dates in here and I'm going to soak them just very briefly in water just to soften them up a little bit. I mean, they're pretty good. You could use it, but I don't want to ruin my food processor. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water to it. And then the water that they're soaking in, I'm just going to add it directly into my food processor as well. So you'll see I have them just kind of soaking in water. So next, I'm going to add about a cup of walnuts to my food processor. And walnuts are great because they're, um, you know, they've got all these healthy fats in them. And people say that, oh, because they look like a brain, they're good for your brain. Well, they're not totally wrong about that. And my mom used to tell me that about some things like fish. If you ate fish, you could swim better. I don't know if that was true, but I, I kind of believe the ones with the walnuts. Because they look like a brain, they're good for your brain. And they actually are. So I'm going to add that in here. And I, and I just buy the walnuts that say um, like halves or pieces because they're actually a little bit cheaper than the ones that say um, whole walnuts. And then next, I'm going to add in about two tablespoons of coconut oil. Depending on how warm your room is, it might be liquid or it might be solid. When it's solid, um, it's got this, you know, it's opaque, it's white. Um, but when it's liquid, it's like completely clear. Yeah. Because we keep the room pretty warm here, it's actually soft enough for me to just scoop out. I'm going to add it into my food processor. And it's actually really great for your skin. People say, oh, coconut oil, it's not good for you because it's got all these saturated fats in it. But actually, it's the fatty acid profile of coconut oil that makes it pretty healthy for you. It's also surprisingly like an antibacterial. It's good for your skin. Um, and it's also got a pretty high smoke point. So I do like to use it for cooking. But as you see, it's like on my fingers. I actually just rub it into my skin because <laughs> it's also good for my skin, especially during these winter months when your, your skin gets really dry. <laughs> you might think, oh, that sounds gross. But actually, it's really, it's really moisturizing. And because it's um, slightly or mildly antibacterial, you might hear of people doing oil pulling where they take a teaspoon of coconut oil and they swish it all around their mouth and it pulls out all of these toxins. Um, and because it's antibacterial, it's good for getting rid of all the bad bacteria that can be in your mouth. So I used to do it um, when I'd go take a shower, I just put a spoonful of <laughs> coconut oil in my mouth and just squish it all around my mouth. And then um, at the end of the shower, I just go <laughs> I don't know if it did anything, but um, you know, I heard that it was good for you, so I wanted to try it. Um, it's not something where you can just do one day and, uh, you know, expect magical results. It's something you kind of have to do um, over and over again on a routine basis. 
So next, after my coconut oil, I'm gonna add in my cocoa powder. Oh, here's the spoon. Use the same spoon I used earlier. Add in about two tablespoons of cocoa powder. And then I'm gonna add in about two tablespoons of uh, dark chocolate chips. And generally, the higher the percentage, the higher the amount of cocoa solids there are in there, which is better for you. You know, I would say anything between like 55% and higher is considered like a dark chocolate. And, you know, the dark chocolate is the one that people say, oh, it's like this, this super health food. Um, and, you know, it's true. It's got all of the antioxidants in it. It's got, um, it's got a lot of... Uh, feel good <laughs> emotions associated with chocolate. You know, I know it's a lot of people use it as like emotional eating. Oh, I need a, I need a box of chocolates. Um, so there is something where, um, you know, it can increase your amount of serotonin levels. So I'm going to add about two tablespoons of that in here as well. And I do try to look at the ingredients when I buy dark chocolate because I don't really want to add too much sugar in it. And I definitely don't want to add the ones that have milk in it. I mean, because then it's milk chocolate. This one's about a 63% cacao. So yeah, good for me. I like the I like the like the 80% chocolate. So I like the stuff that's a little bit better. And next, I'm just gonna add about a half teaspoon of vanilla to this. I mean, oh. I love vanilla. Who doesn't love vanilla? <laughs> it smells amazing. Um, and then I'm going to add about a half teaspoon of peppermint extract. So most of the time when you go and get, you know, peppermint candies for the holidays, it's the, you know, candy canes or it's like peppermint, those peppermint candies, but they've also got a ton of sugar in them. So um, to avoid that, I'm just using a straight up peppermint extract. Cause like we said, we don't wanna add too much sugar into our desserts. We want this to be like a healthy dessert. And I'm also gonna add a pinch of salt. And if you're wondering why I'm adding salt to my desserts, um, the trick is, or the secret is that you add salt to a little bit of salt to your sweets because it brings out the flavor of everything else. You know, you've got the bitterness from the walnuts and the chocolate, You've got um, the sweetness from the dates. You've got the saltiness from the salt. So it kind of just rounds out the flavor in your mouth without it being a salty dessert. I can even add a little, one or two more pinches in there. Okay, and then now I'm gonna check my dates. They, they are softer and I'm gonna add the liquid in there right into the food processor. And that's it. I'm just going to give it a, a buzz. And hopefully this will come together. So close your ears if this is loud. <laughs> I'm giving you fair warning ahead of time. Zoom usually does a really great job with uh, loud appliances. But, you know, just in case, close them if you need to. I'm just going to pulse this. Okay, now I'm just gonna check it to see the consistency and also the taste of it. Mm -hmm. I have a, I'm gonna use a different spatula here. I'm just gonna scrape it down. It is a little bit looser than I'm wanting. It should look more like um, something that you can form into a ball. So what I'm gonna do is actually just add some more walnuts to it and then maybe just a little bit more of the cocoa powder to it. So, yeah, I would say it's about another half cup of walnuts here. I'm just going to add a little bit of the cocoa powder. Just a little dash. Right. Now I'm just going to pulse it again. Mm 
and maybe one more time. Okay, and then let's see how that looks. That looks better. That looks better. Oh, I do have a few more chunks of walnuts in here, so I might just buzz it one more time. Probably could have added a little bit less water when I was soaking the dates, but it's all good. Great, and then that's about it. I'm gonna give it a taste actually to make sure it tastes good. Mmm. Mmm, that tastes really good. I know when you look at this, it'll look like a pile of something, <laughs> but I swear it tastes good. So now I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna um, kind of dollop it into little balls. And then I'm gonna take the melted chocolate that's on top of the stove um, and kind of just dip it in a little bit of chocolate. Mm, that tastes so good, I could just eat it like that. <laughs> there. So I have a tray in the fridge just to keep it cold while I'm working. Yeah, let's see if I can put this on the spotlight. Hopefully you can see that. So I'm gonna take a spoon and I'm just gonna kind of dollop this into little balls. I mean, that's kind of big actually. Or it can kind of form it into little balls. Your hands will get a little messy <laughs> so but basically just like that hopefully you can see what i'm doing just using the spoon rolling it around the spoon so that you get these um little balls and then just put it onto your tray and it's great to make them a little bit smaller because you know when you go to a holiday party you have like all of these cakes and cookies and candies and pies whereas this is a little bit more portion controlled where you can kind of Take one or two bites and it's all done. And this will be fun for kids too. I mean, they like getting their hands messy <laughs> in the kitchen generally. So they'll appreciate this. So you've got a lot of the healthy fats in there from the walnuts and the coconut oil. And then it's naturally sweetened with the dates. So it doesn't have any added sugar to it. And the peppermint and vanilla also give it this kind of sweetness to it without adding any sugar. Sometimes you see these in the store and they're like a dollar each or, you know, they're like really expensive, but you can just make them at home yourself and um, you can freeze them and eat them at a later date. Date. <laughs> No pun intended there, but um, let me see. And you can eat these as a snack. I know, I know <laughs> after lunchtime, I'm kind of in the mood for something sweet afterwards. Um, and this would be the perfect little bite to have, kind of like a post-lunch dessert. Or, you know, when three o'clock rolls around and you're just like, oh my gosh, I've got two more hours of work <laughs> and I need a pick me up. Uh, this is great for that as well. So you can bring this to your next holiday party and I'm sure people would eat this up. No problem.
Only a few more left to go. Let me take out the blade here, make it easier. say I don't make a batch that's smaller than this if you're using a food processor just because the blade might not catch it and you might it might just end up spinning all the ingredients around um, but definitely you can make a larger batch of this and after you eat one you probably will be wishing that you did make a bigger batch <laughs> go and I can probably get about two or three more out of here so I would say that this batch that I made makes about 10 to 12 of these energy balls you can also add in things like coconut to this you can add instead of walnuts you can also use cashews or almonds or you can add in sesame seeds if you like i know last time we were talking about how healthy sesame seeds are so that would be a nice addition to this we could like a sesame chocolate ball <laughs> okay yeah i think i might be able to get 11 or 12 out of this depends on how big you want to make it. You can also use an ice cream scoop if you want to like really portion them out um, evenly. They kind of like the, uh, <laughs> the not so perfectness of just using it, using your hand. And then this last bit over here is just for me to eat. <laughs> hmm. It's so good. Okay, great, great. And then as you can see here, I just have my little energy bites and I'm just going to pop them in the fridge so that when I roll them around in the chocolate, um, it'll set up a lot faster too. Mm. It's really good. I'm going to check on my chocolate here and it is completely melted. It will show you. I'm actually going to pull it off the heat because I do want it to cool a little bit before I roll around, roll the energy balls around. See? Who knew it would be that easy to make your own chocolate, right? I am going to give it a little bit of a taste to see how the stevia worked out in this chocolate. Actually, it tastes really good. I like it. Okay, my hands still have all this good chocolatey gooeyness, and if I wasn't on video right now, I'd totally just lick my fingers. <laughs> um, but I'll spare you from watching that. I will eat up the last little bits of this. This is so good, though. Okay. Yeah. Wash my hands real quick. That is the good thing about vegan desserts. You can taste, you can taste it before, before or after you bake it off, or after you're finished, and then you can always adjust the seasonings and flavors afterward. Okay, so we just have one more dessert to go. It is our coconut cocoa bites. <laughs> So I'm going to take the coconut that I had toasted here in my pan. Mm. I'm going to add it to a bowl. Mm. Put it right here. It's going to go right here, actually, so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm actually just going to use the same spatula because it has a lot of the same ingredients <laughs> in this. Take the coconut. And so that, that was about a quarter cup of coconut. I'm not always the best at measuring, I guess. <laughs> um, maybe a third. 
I love coconut, so I added a little bit more in there. And then next I'm gonna add in about a half cup of peanut butter. You can add whatever nut butter you like. Um, if you can't have peanut butter, you can't have nuts, you can always use like a sun butter. Um, you can even use the tahini that I had made from the other week. Whatever you like, you can put in there. Peanut butter is always so sticky, but it's sticky goodness. And like I usually tell people, recipes are great as a resource, <laughs> but I, I, I do tend to do a lot of the cooking by eye, <laughs> but that's where I kind of get my confidence in the kitchen because I kind of know if it doesn't look right, I can tell, and then I know how to fix it. So that's why I do, do a lot of things by eye. Also, when you measure things like peanut butter, it always gets like stuck in the cup and I'm just like, oh, that's a waste of peanut butter. <laughs> so I'm kind of just like eyeballing this one too. Um, and so whatever nut butter you choose to have, you know, a lot of it is um, a good source of protein. It's also got, you know, the good fats in it that you do want. Um, so I like to use that as a base for this dessert. And then next I'm gonna add two tablespoons of the coconut oil. Maybe I'll just add one tablespoon for right now. I'll just add one, one, I think I'll just add one tablespoon this time. I'm gonna change it up. And then I'm gonna add in a tablespoon of maple syrup. And if you remember one of my tips from one of my other episodes, I like to measure out the, the fats or the oils first because when I measure out something sticky, it just kind of comes right out. So one tablespoon I think is sweet enough. And I love using natural sweeteners like honey and maple syrup because there's not as much of the processing that needs to go into making it. I mean, it's literally just tapped from a tree. So it's closer to the source than what, you know, sugar is. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna add in my cocoa powder. Again, I'm gonna do about whatever's left in this bag. <laughs> <laughs> about a tablespoon and a half, I would say, in there. Um, let me get this coconut. Let me just rub this coconut oil right in again. I love it. I'll keep it moisturized. Um, let's see how much cocoa powder. I do have more in the cabinet, but I can always grab more if I need. Let's try what's in here first. It's about a tablespoon. I remember when people found out it was like, oh my gosh, dark chocolate is like such a superfood. Now I can have it every day, all day. And I'm just like, well, just be careful with the types of chocolate that you are buying because you definitely want the dark chocolate. You want stuff that is um, kind of more of the sustainable chocolate as well. Um, if you've ever seen chocolate, they come in these like large um, cocoa pods and then inside of them, there's like these little seeds that are kind of like these gloopy, look <laughs> gloppy looking seeds. Um, they're like covered in this uh, sliminess. Um, and what they do is they take it and they dry it all and then they actually let it ferment for a few days. So you don't think of chocolate as a fermented food. Um, but they, after they ferment it, then they dry it and they roast it um, and it turns into this beautiful thing we know as chocolate these days. So I love it. it smells good. The whole place smells like chocolate right now. <laughs> and next I'm going to add my vanilla and my salt. Let's see. About a half teaspoon of vanilla.
And where's my salt shaker? Here it is. Again, we just want a pinch of salt to round up the flavors. And then the last but not least, I have oats here. So I eat this a lot, so I always just leave the measuring cup in the actual oat thing. <laughs> I'm gonna add about a half a cup of oats first, and then I'm gonna combine it all and see if I need to add more oats to it. So far it's looking like, like that. <laughs> I might need a little bit more liquid. I might need more oats. I'm just gonna mix it and see what happens. And these are basically like no bake, uh, no bake coconut peanut butter bites, which sounds good to me. Anything that I don't need to throw into the oven sounds good. I'll just use my spoon to mix this a little easier. Depending on how soft your nut butter is, um, if it's like really hard or if it's really cold in your house, you might want to actually do this in a bowl set on top of a pot, kind of like how our bubble boiler was to melt our chocolate, just to make it come together better. But for me, this is perfect because we like to keep it warm here. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. So the more I mix it, the more it kind of comes together there. See? Again, it looks like a pile of you know what, but <laughs> I'm sure, I guarantee you it, it tastes good. Now I'm just gonna take, I'm gonna take a little bit of a bite for me. See how it tastes? Mmm. It tastes really good. It's really peanut buttery. I feel like you can use a little bit more maple syrup. I mean, depends how sweet you like it. But I'm gonna add another tablespoon here. Which means since I'm adding liquid, I might need to add more oats to it too. We'll see. Yeah, I think I think I do actually. I'll add like another quarter cup. You could also throw this in the food processor. I did throw it in the sink already though. <laughs> um, you could also add chocolate chips to this. You could add um, you could add other nuts to it. Like say if you were using an almond butter, you can add chopped nuts to it too to amplify the flavor. Um, you, can, you can even put dried fruits in here if you like that too. Great, and this is basically done. Then I'm just gonna do the same thing and put little dollops of it um, onto a tray. You could actually, I mean, when I, when I'm smushing it in the bowl, I can actually, you can probably roll it out and then cut, and then refrigerate it and then cut it too, but we don't have time for that. So <laughs> I'm just gonna make them into little dollops. Right here. And I just have a refrigerated plate here. And I'm gonna take about a tablespoonful, kind of just roll it around, kind of form it into little balls again. Again, it's great for like portion control. <laughs> you could actually roll these around in the chocolate too, if you want an extra chocolatey flavor. Probably could have added a little bit more cocoa powder to this make it more chocolatey, but if we're gonna roll it around in some chocolate, then I don't think it needs it.
And I really like the toasted coconut in this. So if you are a big fan of coconut, you can actually roll this around in even more coconut. That way they look like um, snowballs kind of. <laughs> you can throw it at people, but I wouldn't say, I wouldn't recommend that. I'd rather eat it. And if you're not a big fan of chocolate, um, you can, can use something called carob. Um, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't have as deep of a flavor as chocolate, but it is a good chocolate replacement. But I just, I love all the health benefits of dark cocoa. It's so good. No, and I can probably make another three. So I can probably get about 10 out of this. Depends how big you make them, really. I feel like <laughs> every time I make one, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> so you eat with your eyes first, right? Okay, so I ended up with about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine of these. Oh, they're so good. <laughs> but like I said, I kept, kept making them bigger, so <laughs> you probably get 10 out of it. But And I love using oats because they're, um, they are a whole grain and they are gluten free for the most part, but it has to say gluten-free. Otherwise, they might have been processed in a facility that also um, processes flour. So if it doesn't say it's specifically gluten-free, then it might actually have traces of gluten. So just be careful of that. This little bit left on my finger. And, you know, it's so great because it's got a lot of fiber, which you don't normally find in desserts. And it's also, um, it's like filling, you know, because it has that fiber, it's filling. And people don't realize it, but oats actually have some protein in them too. So I like adding that, that fact in for people who only see it as like a carb, but I don't like to separate things into just carbs or proteins or fats. You know, you got to look at the whole picture of what a food is. So there you go. Those are my coconut cocoa energy bites. <laughs> and I'm going to throw them in the fridge just so they harden up a little bit. And I'm going to check on, ooh, my turmeric milk looks so good. I'm going to give it a quick whisk. And now it's actually warm enough for me to drink where it won't scold my mouth. I'm just going to give it a quick whisk. That way it gives it that nice little frothiness to it. I can pour it into my mug. Here you go. And that is my eggless eggnog. And look at the punch. It's already gotten this deep red flavor. Let me hold it down here so you can see it. Two of my mocktails that I think are absolutely delicious. <laughs> oh, that's so good. And they're so healthy for you too. Mm -hmm. It's so good. So the last thing I'm gonna do is just finish up these little en date energy bites. Maybe I can prop this up so you can actually see them a little bit better. Use my spoon, my cup here. There you go. It looks better. And then I'm gonna take my chocolate, which, as if you remember, is basically just cocoa butter, cocoa powder, and then two smidgens of stevia leaf powder. 
when people ask me, is stevia safe to eat? Is it okay? And then stevia actually just comes from a leaf. So they turn that into a powder and it is very sweet, which is why the spoon was just like this big. <laughs> and I just added two little smidgens to it. So what I'm gonna do is just throw these in here. See, they've already solidified in the fridge. Oh, I'm sorry, camera's here. <laughs> they've already solidified in the fridge. So I'm just gonna roll them around in the chocolate and then put it back onto, I'm gonna use a fork to get them out. And then put it back onto my sheet tray. I'm gonna do more than one at a time. <laughs> yeah, just give it a little bit of toss in the chocolate. Oh, you know what I forgot to add? I really wanted to add some cocoa nibs to it. Maybe I can sprinkle some cocoa nibs on it while it's, while it's drying. I love cocoa nibs. They're, they're a little bit bitter. And again, it's just like pure cocoa solid. It's like, these are roasted. So they've got a little bit of like a, a depth to the flavor. Oh yeah, that looks good. Because these are cold, they are already setting up. Throw a bunch here. We can sprinkle them on top and toss them in here. Give them a little shake. Cover it in this really thin chocolate. And I've actually have made this before in terms of turning it into my own chocolate. So I made like a chocolate bark. And I added like, oops, I added uh, nuts and dried fruit to it. And then I just let it set up on a sheet, on a cold sheet tray and it tasted delicious. I already, I, I did also try making puffed quinoa because I wanted to make something that resembled like a crackle. <laughs> I loved those as a kid. So um, I took some quinoa, put it in a dry pan, and then I, um, kind of just like puffed it, kind of like popcorn. It doesn't really puff up like popcorn, but you'll hear a little um, pops of it. And so I was using that as my puffed rice for my crackle and it tasted great. It actually had a really nice crunch to it. There we go. Cocoa nibs in there. Just, just a few left to go. It's basically how you make truffles too, but different fillings then. You usually make like a ganache as the filling and then you let it set up and then you scoop it out and then you just cover it in chocolate. That's basically it. If you wanted these to be like really pepperminty, you could actually add more peppermint extract into this chocolate and then roll it around. Actually, not a bad idea. But if you're using a peppermint extract, it is water and chocolate is mostly um, consisting of fats, like the cocoa butter. And oil and water don't really mix well together. So <laughs> Um, when you do that, just make sure that the droplets are evenly dispersed and because it won't really want to emulsify. You could also use a food grade peppermint oil instead. So just a little toss. And that's it. Ooh, this looks so good. Looks really decadent too, doesn't it? <laughs> mm. 
And there you go. Those are our cocoa. No, these are our chocolate peppermint energy bites. <laughs> I have to eat one actually. I, I really want to eat one. <laughs> so I think I, I will eat one actually. <laughs> mm. That's so yummy. I'm gonna pop these back in the fridge so that they harden really quickly. And then we'll just give a rundown of everything that we made. Oh my gosh, this is so good. I'm doing <laughs> here. Cheers to you in the holidays. I have my eggless eggnog here to go with my energy bite. That is perfect. I have my holiday punch here. And then if you don't want it as strong, you can strain it out into your glass. But like I said, I do like strong tea. So I'm gonna let this steep overnight and you can serve it over some ice. And you got your holiday punch for your holiday party. Then here we have our coconut cocoa bites. And then we have these that I just popped into my mouth. <laughs> these are the chocolate peppermint energy bites. So hopefully you can kind of see those. But yeah. Wow, that really turned red. I know, right? And it was literally just a small amount of the hibiscus that was in here. We want some of everything you made, <laughs> but you're going to have to come here. <laughs> I miss you all. <laughs> it looks delicious. I want it all. I know if only I could just FedEx it to you or something or send it to you in the mail. <laughs> I wish I could go. I wish better yet. I wish you can all come out here and have a party with me because I really miss everybody. So let me bring over all of our delicious so it's hard to get the, a good angle on here, but that is it for today. Um, I mean, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask in the chat, but I just wanna say thank you all for joining as always. And, you know, thank everybody uh, for making this happen, you know, from farmers getting these into the fields and truck drivers getting it to the stores and, you know, food work workers who are stocking the shelves for us and all the essential workers who are out there. So thank you so much for helping me get the food from the farm to our fork. Um, but last but not least, just thank you to all of you for joining us today. And because it is the giving season, we are doing all pay what you can cooking workshops this month. So please consider donating at the link in the chat to make sure the proceeds go to Chefs for Chefs and also to Slow Food this month. So. Thank you again, everybody, for joining. And of course, you can always stay connected in our Facebook group. So thank you all again for being here today. It's been so fun. And it's been great to see you all. Um, so thank you and happy holidays. Bye, everyone. <laughs>